What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today we are continuing the Y series and we're going to be talking about Mirsa. If you guys are wondering why there's a calculator up with like all of these graphs and numbers and stuff, because oh, we're going to do some simple math today. I know a lot of people have uh, a lot of issues. Um, I know I did when I started out playing games, uh, you know, Gasha type games, understanding how speed scaling damage works. Uh, so we're going to take a little bit of time and kind of break this down for you, talk about a simple formula that you guys can use, okay? Um, so before we get into that, I want you to, I, I want to bring your attention down here to the skills, and basically what's going to happen is you're going to take the basic multiplier, okay? And then you're going to multiply that by the power, okay? And if you see, like for instance, like her power in the slot 2 right here where my mouse is pointing, um, this is going to increase based on this, uh, this little uh, formula right here. So the point zero 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 seven five times whatever the base speed here is um, then you'll add this onto this and then you'll multiply it by this okay you still with me still with me i'm gonna do it all for you but i just want to kind of explain that so if i lost you just relax grab a seat chill because we're gonna go through it together all right let's go <laughs> all right so uh, when we get into this let's go ahead and preview some skills here uh, we're gonna look at her skill three first uh, her skill three Comes with a silence and bushes the target, silencing them for two turns. Uh, damage deal increases proportional to caster speed. Uh, so this is one of those things. Now, for the sake of example, I want to use high speed, like a 260 build. Uh, what I don't want you guys to be put off by the 260 build. I'll talk to I'll talk to you guys about how to offset that uh, naturally, because 260 speed is not easy to get, even though her base speed is relatively high um 260 is not easy to get but we'll talk about how to offset that as we go through the video so uh for the sake of learning experience so this is what we're going to do we're going to operate from the premise of 1.8 as our base multiplier okay so now if we take this 0.85 which is the power essentially uh what we're going to do is assume that she's at 260 eh, 260 speed so we're going to take the 0.0015 okay and then we're going to multiply this by uh 260 okay that should put us at 0.39 okay so at 0.39 uh now we're gonna add this to the 0.85 plus 0.85 okay and then that gives you 124 so now her total power is 124 if she's at 260 okay so now you take the and then we multiply that by 1.8 all right, and then that gives her a 2.232 base multiplier. So what what does that mean, essentially, when she's dealing damage? That means that if you have 2,000 attack, okay, so if we multiply, if you have 2,000 attack, and we multiply this by 2,000, right, because 2,000 is fair, especially if you're running speed boots. Whoa, it's definitely not 8 million. <laughs> ah, that's funny, 2.2, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty hilarious. It definitely is not that okay so it leaves you with a base attack of like 4400 right does that make sense so then from that point we would factor in crit we would factor in crit damage right um and then you would have the total amount of damage that she can deal right so if it was 200 percent, then you'd multiply that again if 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 the if we're operating off of those numbers okay so so that's going to be the big thing there uh so when we look at this overall um mirsa has the potential to deal a pretty decent amount of damage um where mirsa shines is her utility though um the utility of mirsa is what makes her a threat more so than the amount of damage output that she deals so with that being said she is not a hero that I would recommend uh, that, let's say you pulled her today and you just started the game, that you're going to build her right away. Um, because her stat requirements are, are pretty high, uh, I, I would say, even though she has utility. And on top of that, i say her primary focus is going to be that she's for PvP. Okay? PvP. That's where she's going to shine. So when you look at her overall, you have to pay attention to the fact that she silences. Uh, so she's effective if you want her fast. Um, she can deal a decent amount of damage. Her base attack is at 885, uh, so it's relatively low. And a lot of people would be off-put by Mirsa because her attack power is so low. But because she scales with speed, the faster you get her, essentially the more damage she's going to deal. Now, uh, when you when you look at everything else that comes in her kit, like her passive, she increases evasion, so she's hard to hit. And uh, think of her as a baby Emma Cartuya. So how ev evasion works is you ever had that thing where you had like element disadvantage against a target, and you swung and you missed, and you dealt like literally no damage. Um, that's basically what evasion does. And when her health is below fifty percent, uh, the effect is increased by an extra fifteen percent. 
Okay, um, and then after successfully evading, the caster is granted increased speed for two turns, right? So she'll, once she gives herself that increased speed, she's also increasing the damage output that she also deals, okay? Um, and then uh, the cooldown it decreases by one. So every time she misses, she's going to buff herself. So think of it as a self buff. So now if you take the math that we just did on skill number three and you add 30% speed to that, Okay, like now you're starting to see because, you know, like what do we got here? Uh, again, we'll use 260, 260 times 0 0.30. Okay, uh, that's an extra 70 speed, right? So uh, 260 plus what, 78 was that? Oh, shoot, not multiplied. 260 uh, plus 78. Uh, now, well, <laughs> come on, man. 260 plus 278 equals no what, what am i doing right now 260 plus 78 i'm sorry it's my first day I've never done this before okay uh equals 338 right so now we take that 338 right and then uh so now we have 338 speed right and then we times uh the 0 0.0015 right and now we have 0 0.507 right so now now it brings the power to you know 1.3 uh, you know, 1.3 ish. Okay. Uh, so 1.3 ish. Okay. Let's say 1.35, uh, times 1.8. Okay. And now, now all of a sudden, uh, now your, your multiplier is even higher, right? So now you get another, uh, you know, a certain percentage of damage and that's going to allow you to deal damage. Now, uh, what might not seem like much on paper starts to become really annoying because as a unit, let's say you have her built a Moonlight Dream Blade, uh, and you have the Moonlight Dream Blade, and as people keep trying to attack her, she increases her speed. So it's basically a self buff. You stack that with attack buff, and now you have an issue. Because uh, you also have to factor in the attack power, which was that basic 1.8, and now you have the attack power times, you know, whatever, 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 um, and then you're literally just pegging the enemy, 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 right? Uh, because she's going to be really tough to hit, especially with the Moonlight Dream Blade. If that's not enough, enough the skill enhance uh now gives her the 15 percent increased evasion um as her health her health gets lower right so if she happens to take an aoe attack um or you know uh, she's going to be mostly taking reduced damage. So, like, your first thought might be, well, uh, Mirsa's going to, she's a thief and she's squishy with her, you know, 4,000 whatever base HP. So, she's just going to die, not necessarily. Uh, because with Moonlight Dream Blade plus the increase evasion passive, she's going to be taking a lot of reduced damage. And then once that reduced damage gets to a point where she's below 50%, which is probably where you want her to be, um, then she's going to get an extra, okay? 30% evasion. So now when you have this unit that's really tough to hit and it's kind of pissing you off and she's just literally tearing into you, um, what happens is with her skill 1, when her skill 3 is on cooldown, um, she has a 35% chance uh, up to 45, up to 60% chance to decrease the uh, enemy speed. Um, and this attack also scales with speed, right? Except at a 0 0.0075 times speed ratio. We're not going to do the math on that, but you guys get the idea. Um, and this is why I said, like, when I look at Mirsa, am I going to expect Mirsa to deal a lot of damage? Um, to be that unit that hits you for 50k? Absolutely not. What I do expect her to do, though, is in a long, drawn-out fight where the enemy is unable to hit you, uh, especially when paired with units like Violet or ML Cartuya, um... You can use this unit as a way to slowly whittle the enemy down. And then if you're using this as a team combination to where, let's say she is paired with units that buff speed. Um, or she is paired with other units that are buffing attack to maximize her, her damage dealing output. Then you can easily take out problematic units that you don't want to deal with. So like if you're in a team composition where um, you smashed out an enemy's Violet. Or you smashed out an enemy's Kisei. Um, and now all you have left is the healers like Dien and Angelica. Now, Angelica's only going to be able to, to heal so many times um, it, as you apply the attack speed reduction. So once you reduce uh, Angelica's attack speed, right, um, now her, her combat readiness is low, right, uh, or it fills up slower. And then if you apply the silence for two turns, it's not really much that she can do. So, you know, with that being said, as I look at, like, Mirsa's kit overall, um, she has some decent... 
speed stats. Uh, the rest of her stats are squishy because I feel like in her the way that she was designed, that's how she was supposed to be. Because if you look at this, if she had 1500 attack, 1300 attack, she'd be broken. Then you'd have a unit that you literally can't hit, okay? You have a unit you can't hit that's one-shotting your entire team, <laughs> locking you down, and slowing you down. Like, I feel like she'd literally be busted. So, uh, when you take a look at this, the key thing is you got to understand that her base speed is high. So, she's designed to be fast and get a lot of turns and capitalize on the enemy's mistakes. Uh, and that's what her primary purpose is. She's not there to take hits. If she is going to take hits, chances are that they're going to miss. Uh, and then the, that reduced damage is going to whittle her to 50%, where at that point she just flames on. Okay. Now, she is not a uh, I win the whole team by myself type unit. She's more of a let me position this hero in a team composition um, as utility and damage, kind of a hybrid to maximize the efficiency of the entirety of your team. Okay, so like I said, definitely would pair her with like a Melkartuya or like a Violet um, or other units uh, that uh, would complement her kit. Um, like I said, I'd use her more as a utilitarian rogue than a unit that I'm going to throw in there expecting her to kill an entire team. Now, could she kill an entire team? Absolutely. But with that being said, utility is her focus, and it's apparent based on how low her other stats are. Okay, so don't be turned off by the 885 attack. I mean, it's really, really low. Uh, even for a thief, some could argue that somebody should probably buff that base attack because, to be honest, she can need it. Uh, but with the speed scaling, you know, as we calculate with the 260 speed, um, again, that's that's really high speed. Um, she gets a little extra ump. Probably not enough umph to be like, damn, she's crazy, but enough umph to give her some damage that somebody's going to blink twice, okay? Um, and then when you look at this, I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I wanted to talk to you guys about how to offset that, okay? So if you don't have 260 speed, how do you get Mirsa to deal more damage or deal the damage that she would deal if she had the speed multiplier? And the answer is, is that you're just literally going to give her more attack. Uh, when looking at building Mirsa, she's just basically going to be your standard damage dealer. Um, you know, attack power, lots of attack power, as much attack power as you can get, much crit, as much crit damage as you can. The difference maker being the speed. If you can rock a 260 Mirsa, then go with the 260 Mirsa. If you can't rock the 260 Mirsa, then drop her down to 200 to 220, but pair her with other units that could capitalize on that. So let's say you got a 260, 270, 250, whatever, Ruzid, um, that's able to A, buff speed for her to give her an advantage, um, and then you have other units that also buff attack, um, then you can literally play around with this. Uh, Mirsa is is a problem. I just don't think that she'll be a problem and, or necessarily difficult to deal with until later on. She's one of those units that somebody is going to go all in on her and you're going to have a really tough time dealing with her. But most people aren't going to go all in on her because they're going to look at her base stats. They're going to look at her multipliers. They're not going to understand the speed mechanics. They're not going to understand the utility about this unit. And they're just going to write her off. Um, so like I said, my recommendation for this unit, uh, does she have the potential to be a beast? Absolutely. Uh, but she's a super high investment unit that, that most early game players I would not recommend building or even touching um, until they have a stronger foundation in the game. Once you have a strong foundation in the game, though, however, I think that overall Mirsa could be a beast. Um, in terms of artifacts, like I mentioned before, Moonlight Dreamblade is probably my top choice for her. Uh, just mainly because, yeah, um, she, she's... Yeah, with that extra evasion chance, I mean, it'll make her pretty nutty. Um, and I don't mean just throwing a Moonlight Dream Blade on her at level 1. I'm meaning a max Moonlight Dream Blade. Um, but, of course, that will happen over time. Uh, like I said, this is not a unit that you're going to, Oh, man, I'm going to build this for my Wyvern team. Nah. You're going to build this unit uh, after your gear is where it needs to be and you have your core teams locked down and you have the gear to play around with uh, when you're messing around with comps. The unit that shows up in a team comp and nobody knows what to do because they don't really see her much and then when they experience what exactly she does, they realize how much of a pain in the butt she is. Okay, um, So that's that's the thing with Mirsa. Really high base speed, so she's, stu she's stupid easy to, to get super fast. Like I said, her primary focus is going to be more the utility then it will be the damage even though the damage can be there if you get her her speed crit crit damage and attack power high enough if you can't pull the speed 
definitely offset with more attack and go with moderate speed but then make sure you place her with units that can help her capitalize on her lack of speed uh, or uh, if you guys want to play for the turn two you guys could gamble with that um, since she's going to buff her speed anyway via her passive okay so with that being said guys that pretty much covers my take on Mirsa um, there is one thing that I had to point out though on, on skill three um, if um, if it's not the base multiplier times the power, then it's the base multiplier plus the power. Um, it's either, I can't remember which one it is, but one or the other. If it's actually plus the power multiplier, then uh, our third skill multiplier is actually higher. Um, it comes out to like 3.04 instead of 2.2, um, in which case uh, the damage would be uh, significantly higher. Um, but that's something that I'll have to play with, and we'll, we'll get that through trial and error. Uh, but even if that's the case, um, yeah, she, my, my opinion about her is still the same. So, uh, anyways, guys, like I said, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below, and I'll be happy to assist. With that being said, y'all, we'll see you on the next video. Peace.